is my morning routine as a single mom living in a van waking up in a Walmart parking lot. So of course, as soon as we wake up, I make sure to get my toddler lots and lots of cuddles and kisses. Then I like to throw on some clothes because it's a little chilly and I want to make sure we are as warm as possible. After putting myself together, I go on to put Kareem's jacket on and he pulls off the window covers. This is our beautiful view of Walmart. We don't usually park in parking lots, but sometimes that's the case. I then go in to make up the bed so I don't have to do it later on. We then get out of the van and walk into Walmart to use the restroom and brush our teeth. I do have a toilet in my van, but we are already sleeping in a Walmart parking lot, so we might as well utilize all of their services. Since I didn't need anything in Walmart, we were able to just run back to the van. And immediately, I get started with cooking some breakfast. So then I set up my kitchen, which is the basic two-burner propane stove. While I'm doing this, my toddler is usually watching his morning show on his iPad. Today, we are making something very simple. Sausage, pancakes, and hash browns per Kareem's request. But this is only a pit stop till we get to our next destination. So if you really like these morning routines and you want to see what we get up to next, follow us. It's all praises to the Heavenly Father through the name of the only begotten Son. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone for teaching us the 100% truth according to the Bible and who rule well. Shalom to all you Akim and you Aqua, those are the hopeful elect that are seeking for salvation. And I haven't quite figured out a title of this lesson. But it's been very trendy to see these women living in vans, storage units, and tents, especially so-called black women. I typed in, as you see here, black women living in vans. There's been quite a few, uh, lots of videos actually showing up from the search. You see here, the eviction crisis continues. For, it says black women are living in their cars. Uh, a lot of landlords are not taking i did a video on this months ago landlords are not taking section eight which majority of our women especially so-called black women are the major recipients of section eight you know landlords are no longer wanting to deal with the risk of having section eight tenants so they're getting rejected even though they have the voucher so they're living in tents looking for a spot a home to stay in you see here living in a car a day in a life Truth, working from home, nomad life. You see here, uh, damn, rough ass looking so-called black woman here said living in my car, morning routine. The video that I just showed in the clip, living in a van at Walmart with a toddler. Okay, you see here, I'm familiar with this young woman. He says it's Janae living in a car. She does many videos as you see here. You got a so-called black woman in the storage unit, living in the storage unit. Right. Very trendy of how the Lord is bringing these women down. And, you know, these women have been, have been very proud uh, for many years. I don't need no man, independent, single, etc. You know, the scripture I'm going to is Isaiah 32nd uh, chapter. It says Isaiah 32 and 9 says, rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters, give ear unto my speech. So, look, this is the time to really be pushing harder than ever to seek the Lord. And that, hey, look, when the Lord said, seek ye me, he wasn't just talking about the men. The women of our nation have to get in order as well. So the women need to listen up and rise up and get in order. And for those who don't, you will, you will be humble. Because the Lord never leave those that are righteous forsaken. So the ones of our women who don't want to take heed and get in order and listen and uh, take heed to the prophets. Let me uh, put my phone on. Do not disturb. Those that don't want, that don't want to take heed to the to the, the, the prophets that the Lord set up to get in order. You will be brought low. Right. Because the Lord speaks to his men. Now it says verse 10. Many days and years shall ye be troubled. Yeah, troubling times are here. You got homelessness at all time high inflation. Getting, it basically, we're getting ready to see a hyperinflation. The lights are getting ready to turn out. The power is getting ready to get shut down. A societal collapse is getting ready to hit. Yeah, this devil is making a full fledged push towards his new world order. Right. So troubling times are here and it's going to turn up each and every day as we get closer all right, to the Lord's return. It says, ye careless daughter, ye careless women. And for years, our women have been careless. Right? No care in the world because they've been having protection from the so-called white man. So-called white man gave them opportunity uh, in the society. 
the scriptures say uh, the women shall compass a man. So these women have been giving power positions over men and it went to their fucking heads. And so now we in a time where judgment has come. We all have to appear before that judgment seat as the scriptures say. So women have been careless, no thought at all for the future and what lied ahead. The warnings that's been going out. Now you have some of the hopeful elect women who are trying to get an order. We know we always encourage and exhort our people, you know, the believers, including the women, to keep fighting the good fight of faith. Stand in order and doing what you can do towards the ministry. It says, for the venture shall fail, the gathering shall not come. Verse 11 says, tremble ye women that are at ease. You need to be trembling for those that are at ease because we're in a time of war. And that's the thing. Women are not built for war, you know, and especially if you're not under the protection of a righteous man, which the Lord is going to protect. If you're part of the elect man, woman, or child, the Lord is going to send that protection. He's going to send the right man to lead a woman who's trying her best to get in order. You know, the, the story of Ruth, you know, uh, even though Ruth wasn't part of, uh, wasn't an Israelite. Okay, but nevertheless, uh, the Lord sent her to a man that would lead her. Okay, but that's just an example, right? It says, um, be troubled, ye careless ones. Strip you and make you bare and gird sackcloth upon your loins. Because the Lord is getting ready to uh, uh, bring you down. Getting ready to humble those who have been careless. And this is going to be a great humbling experience through the times of uh, what we're getting ready to experience, which is Jacob's trouble. Homelessness is one of those plagues. Second Ezra the 15th chapter. Matter of fact, I'll get that. Second Ezra the 15th chapter. All right, tells you uh, 15 to 49. I will send plagues upon thee. Widowhood. Okay, widowhood is a woman without her husband. I'm just curious to know what definition. Yep, w woman whose spouse has died. The state of, of or period of being a widow or widower. Now remember, I'm going to read on. It says, poverty, famine, sword, and pestilence to waste thy houses with destruction and death. So you got all these lists of various plagues that's going to destroy uh, you rebellious, disobedient Israelites who have been very prideful in the process. Widowhood, you know, we, we know what, what a widow is, a woman whose husband has died. And the Lord said he's going to send forth plagues, uh, famines. And these men, a lot of these men are going to starve out. And a lot of these men are going to be put to death during the wars, whether it be sent off to World War III or whether it be in this societal collapse, which is going to come to uh, anarchy. So a lot of people are going to die, especially the men who are going to be trying to protect their households via these wars. So these women are going to be without their protection. All right. And it says poverty. You see, poverty is weighing on these people. Homelessness. Uh, women are struggling to make ends meet. And men. There's men who are struggling to make ends meet. The difference is no one wants to be homeless. But homeless conditions are more bearable for a man than it is a woman. You know, that's where a lot of uh, men take advantage of women. You know, a lot of women can get put to death in those situations. Right. Uh, uh, being. Uh, without protection, without being behind, you know, uh, in, in a, a home or a house to further protect, you know, protect you. And these men are becoming very, uh, uh, say spirits are created for vengeance. They're becoming very vengeful and angry with the women. This is the society that we are living in. Men that are deprived. It reads on, it says famine, sword, war, destruction, right? And pestilence. Remember, diseases. So <laughs> these people are fighting so many. They're going through so many different plagues. Uh, it's, it's, it's can't, you can't even imagine what these, these people are experiencing. You got women that are living in tents or storage rooms, but also fighting with uh, certain diseases that they uh, are, are going through. Medicine costing lots of money, you know, that they have to routinely pay for, you know, high blood pressure or diabetes or whatever issues that they got going on um it's another disease that's very prominent amongst black women um that that is many of them actually but a lot of these uh, people are ex experiencing great miseries man 
It says to waste thy houses with destruction and death. So the Lord is bringing lots of humbling experiences amongst these worldly people. And these women have been head over heels for Esau in this, in this uh, world. Okay. But this is what this world promotes. First John, I believe it's two and five. I haven't brought this out in a while. Let me see here. First John. First <clears throat> uh, John 2 and 15 says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. So our people have been head over heels for this world, man. The ways of this world, fornicating at the idols, adultery, not obey obeying to the, the, the order that the Lord set up. And with that order comes, you know, a, a way to live, meaning keeping the laws to the best of our ability. Obedience. Our people rather uh, be more obedient to a wicked ass world because of the love of the father and his only begotten son is not in him or in them. It says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. This is what the world promotes. A lustfulness, a lasciviousness, pleasing your flesh, carnality, rather than seeking the ways of the Lord, living in the spirit, order, obedience. That's, that, you know, our people rather seek the ways of the world than those things. You know, things that are lustful to the eyes. Rather than uh, um, pleasing the Lord and, and seeking the ways that, that are spiritual. It says in the pride of life, our people have been full of themselves, especially these women. We have an opportunity to take a man to court and lie on a man uh, to get alimony and child support. All those days are coming to an end. The wick and food stamps. All these things are coming to an end. It says is not of the father, but is of the world. Verse 17, and the world passes away. That's what we see. A world is getting ready to pass away. So during the process of its deterioration, the humble is being brought, the, the, the prideful is being brought low. We see a world that these people invested in, these women with all these college degrees who are heavy in debt, can't get a job to even pay their student loans back, to pay their rent. It says, in the lustful and the lust thereof, but the but he that doeth the will, the most high, abideth forever. And so now you're seeing those who are the hopeful elect who are standing firm through these troubling times. Yes, we catching hell, we're going through our shit, but overall the Lord has given us the the necessities to survive through these times. And it starts with giving us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, which is keeping us stable. Okay, but the rest of these jokers are going through hell, man. Uh let's see. Let me see. Uh, here we go. I, I mentioned this. So I want to bring this out. Uh, going back to Isaiah 32 and 12, it says, They shall lament for the teats, for the pleasant fields, for the fruitful vine. Let's go into the word teats. Breast of a woman. It says paps. Okay. Let's go into the word paps. food etc basically they, they're going to lament you know for the, the government assistance and you know all the benefits that they receive from you know the government from esau the so-called white man but they're going to realize that all that's dried up and this man's going to pull the rug from up under these people especially these women they're learning the hard way and they're going to realize how beautiful or how important it was to get an order and get under that 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 man get get protection from man especially a righteous man isaiah 4 and 1 two more and i'm gonna close out isaiah 4 and 1 and in that day seven women shall take hold of one man that was that number seven represents completion so it's going to be a, a a large number of women trying to get with that righteous man saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel only let us be called by thy, by thy name to take away our reproach. So they're going to want to get with that righteous man to be protected in that day. Because the times we're coming into, you know, the troubles is going to be unbearable. So the only way for, for them to be protected is to, you know, get with that righteous man. 
And the Lord's going to make it clear who he's dealing with in these in these last days, as we see now. If those who have uh, eyes to see and ears to hear. Lord willing, I and the rest of you, Akim and Akwaf endure. The Lord's going to show favoritism to his chosen. OK, but those men who he's going to be dealing with, these women are going to want to get with these men. Right. Because the Lord is is, is setting up order as you see. OK, so um, last scripture. <clears throat> Let me make sure I get this. I'll be forgetting where this one's at. Oh, there we go. Proverbs 16 and 18. It says, pride go up before destruction. And in haughty spirit before he fall, we see pride is not the way to go. Everyone on the face of the earth that's prideful is going to be humble. Best believe it. And they're going to go through a process of um, destruction. And then ultimately, the Lord's going to destroy them for good. Okay. Uh, on this side, of course, the judgment is going to play out the way it's supposed to for those that are prideful. They're going to be brought low, going to be put to shame and embarrassed. You see what's going on with these celebrities. All these celebrities are being humbled right before our eyes. And speaking of mainly of the Israelites who sold out, looking crazy as hell, bugged out, losing their minds, uh, unhappy. Health is deteriorating. Ashamed. And you women, man. Verse 19 says, better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly. Than to divide the spoil with the proud. So it's better to be humble. Joy, we're living in a world that's getting ready to pass away. And, and it's so much more better to be humble. The water Yahweh Bashim Yabashai for that humbling spirit that he's putting on us. And Lord willing, we remain. Because this, this shit ain't no joke right here, man. You know, you see this woman here, Long Island police car hits woman pointing loaded gun in the middle of an intersection. This woman was pointing a gun and the police just ran her, just basically ran her ass over. And she was waving a gun. Women are losing their mind, man. Women are losing their motherfucking mind. Excuse my language. Getting humbled. See? How I bathed living in my car. <laughs> this ain't, man. Woo. Living in your car for beginners. So there you have it, man. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Chakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom.